Hey there, this is Chad from Zombie Fight Shark. Welcome back to our Thor complete walkthrough series. This is episode 27. Episode 27. So if you've hung in there for all 26 previous episodes, uh, bless you and thank you. And I hope you've subscribed by now. <laughs> hey. So we are talking about the back of Thor and we're on step sequencer CV output and um this one not too crazy complicated um so i am using uh, a subtractor here just as my is my guinea pig to demonstrate some of this stuff so uh, the subtractor is actually running back into the thor here and then it's coming out so so you'll uh and initially here i've got the thor turned off see all my oscillators are turned off um so i just have the audio in audio out coming so um so the step sequencer here, this part, is triggering the subtractor. Note is going to CV. Gate is going to gate. Um, I haven't programmed the curve uh, to the pitch yet or the phase. Actually, we're going to make that FM amount. Um, but I'll do those in just a second. All right. So right now, it sounds like this. <laughs> And I unrouted my curves uh, just so you can hear. Okay, so that's the pure subtractor, etc. So now we're gonna route curve one to phase, and we'll route curve two to FM amount, and then we're gonna program them. So curve one, um, we'll start at zero. We'll just do kind of a pattern like this. So hopefully that'll be obvious. So here's curve one routed to the oscillator phase. Not a big difference um, depending on the patch with the subtractor that phase can matter a lot or not matter a lot um, but curve 2 routed to FM amount you're gonna notice I'm actually gonna back it all the way off here and build it up. So I think you can hear that pretty clearly, how it's just whoosh, whoosh, um, and that's, you know, there you go. Um, that's your, that's your, your CV out. And then we've got start of sequence out, end of sequence out. So, uh, let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can trigger the, something with those two. So hang on one second. All right, so I've got the start of sequence out routed to a um, Dr. Octo Rex here, um, and just you can it just triggers it. Um, I've got this kick pattern set to a pendulum, and every time the pendulum loops, it triggers that Octo Rex. So take a listen. So an, an example, it's just sending a, it's just sending a trigger, basically it opens a gate, it's opening a gate or it's in a, you know, an on signal. Um, and it sends it to that amp envelope in this case, but it could send it to anything, um, any note or whatever. Um, and, uh, let me see if I can get that end of sequence out to also trigger something. Okay. So through, through much experimentation, I was able to gets this step sequencer out to do something um in or end of sequence out to do something here um which ironic because this is literally the very last thing uh left and i'm not gonna lie it took a while for me to find a way to actually notice that it was triggering something so 
I've uh, got a subtractor and a combinator with the Thor here. I've got it routed through the audio just because I didn't want to add extra pieces to it. Um, and uh, so the start of sequence, it triggers the gate, which is I've just got it set to trigger a long note. Um, we'll add some noise to it just for fun. And um, then the uh, end of the sequence... I ran it into this CV1, and I programmed CV1 to turn the filter on and off. So you'll see it blip when it when it goes. So um, this is what that sounds like. So yeah, that little blip that that took a while to get there, and it, it'll repeat, but you won't hear it anymore because this start of sequence out it only sends when you begin the sequence. So if this is set to run then you don't get it if it's at least if it's on forward i think on pendulum you might get it um over and over let's let's find out it takes a long time for that gate to close you can see you know the filter and the sequence ends it keeps going but yeah that start of sequence it won't it won't happen again as long as that just continues to run. So, um, I, you know, that one, I can see how you could cascade stuff to trigger. I don't know if the end of sequence out is necessary, um, cause you could automate so much of that stuff. Um, but it's there, it's there. You can do a thing with it. Um, it is functioning. Um, and I, I'm sure if I gave myself plenty of time and a reason, then there's something else I can you can do with that. I just haven't thought of it yet. Um, and so leave me a comment if you have an idea of another way to, that that can be used. And I'll, uh, I'll definitely follow up because um, that, was, that was an oddball one. So anyways, on that note, that's the end. Um, that's the at least the end of... Uh, of going through all of these pieces uh, in this beast called Thor. Um, so we're going to do another um, episode of uh, just kind of putting it all together and showing how it all works together. And, um, and, and just another example of uh, if uh, I did it in a previous video of, uh, of if you want the knobs to move on their own, um, then how to program with a combinator so that the knobs will move on their own because uh, that's just fun to see um or it is for me anyway so um anyway um we're we're, we're about at the end so uh, i hope uh, that made more sense uh just leave me a comment if um if you need, if you need more samples of what that step sequence or cv output can do that little block right there uh and i'll and i'll see you next time in the last episode thanks for watching cheers <laughs>